Atlanta, Georgia, land of the free and the home of the Braves. The Atlanta Braves have so often been the team of what could have been. In the 1950s, despite having a team that featured all-time legend Hank Aaron and Hall of Famers Warren Spahn and Red Shane Deanst, they were only able to convert that to a single World Series title. Potentially even more baffling is that the Braves of the 90s won their division an incredible 14 seasons in a row from 1991 to 2005. They even won the National League pennant five times during that period, but were only able to convert that into a single World Series. In some ways though, that's baseball, and that's life. Part of what makes baseball so fascinating to so many people is that while the best team wins the majority of the time, you still have to play every game. Most true baseball fans wouldn't actually want their team to win the World Series every year. Atlanta fans may be disappointed that they didn't get to win more, but I don't think there's a single person who's going to be mad that they got to watch Maddox, Glavin, and Smoltz cut batters to pieces for as long as they did. The good news is that the Braves have been serving their fans well and continue to put winning teams on the field. The 2020 Braves even took the eventual champions, the Los Angeles Dodgers, to seven games in the National League Championship Series. The bad news though, is that the city of Atlanta has not. Even just visiting the city, it's incredibly apparent that the effects of redlining are still very much impacting the people of Atlanta. It's also clear that instead of putting in the work to improve the lives of people in their city, most businesses and infrastructure, including the Braves' new stadium, are escaping to the suburbs. It's sad because there's so much going on culturally in Atlanta. One of the biggest things is that for the last few years, a lot of the biggest hip hop artists have all come out of Atlanta. There's also a lot going on in the world of food. While I had a lot of choices for a recipe, it's hard not to highlight the Atlanta diner chain, Waffle House. This diner has been serving affordable waffles and hash browns 24 seven to the people of Atlanta since 1955 and has become a true cultural icon. This recipe might also be the only one that's actually helped to win baseball games. When the Braves first installed a Waffle House at Turner Field in 2013, they went on an incredible 14 game winning streak. The most famous meal on the Waffle House menu has to be the All-Star Breakfast, which I can only assume is named after 25 time All-Star Hank Aaron. To make our own, we'll start with the hash brown. Take a couple of rusted potatoes and peel the skin off. It takes about one medium potato per hash brown. Grate them on a box grater and then rinse them and let them soak in cold water for half an hour. Once it's done soaking, drain the water and let it drain onto paper towels to try and get it as dry as possible. The drier the potatoes, the crispier the hash brown. While those are drying, we'll start on the waffle batter. In one bowl, add one cup all-purpose flour, one tablespoon sugar, one tablespoon baking powder, and whisk that all together. In another bowl, beat one egg together with three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Fold the contents of those two bowls together while adding milk until the mixture is smooth, which will be roughly about three quarters of a cup. Let the mixture rest for about 10 minutes. Once it's rested and your waffle iron is preheated, ladle the waffle mixture onto the iron and cook until golden brown. Next, you get to watch me struggle to extricate the waffle from its maker and hope that your own waffle goes smoother. Waffle House makes their waffles quite big, so it's going to take two badges on my smaller waffle maker. So let's do that again. The all-star breakfast comes with a choice of three different meats, bacon, ham, or sausage. The only real choice among those though is bacon, so that's what we'll make. In a cold pan, put in three strips of bacon and then cook on medium heat until they're slightly crispy. Take the bacon out of the pan and transfer it to a paper towel lined plate to cool. Now to make the hash brown, heat up a pan on medium high heat. Grab a large handful of potatoes and add that to the pan, pressing it down so it's flat and uniform. 
Cover it with a lid and let it cook for two and a half to three minutes until it's crispy on the bottom. Attempt to flip the hash brown over and mess it up. Now, sometimes the first one is sacrificial, so just accept that and try again. Well, I go ahead and try that a few more times, but I still end up messing up the flip. Sometimes this is how cooking goes though. Even if you've done something right in practice, it doesn't always go well in the final dish, and that's okay. The good news is that it's still delicious, and even with a failed flip, you can still season it up with salt and pepper, let it get crispy on the other side, and serve it up. It'll be just as crispy and delicious as the Waffle House version, even if it doesn't look as good. The All-Star Breakfast comes with two eggs any style, and since the menu photo shows them sunny side up, that's how we'll cook them. Crack each egg into an individual bowl and pour each egg into the opposite sides of a pan on low heat. Cover the pan and let the eggs cook for five minutes. Carefully remove the eggs from the pan and season them with salt and pepper and plate them up. The final step is to toast two slices of bread of your choice. Bring all your many pieces of this big breakfast together Take a bite and enjoy the game.